Mrs. Neumeyer here, and we're back again for our six weeks. This time for our fine arts, we're going to be doing great artists. And so we're going to get to study six different artists, and then we're going to be able to make some art projects that are similar to the masters. So similar to the ones that the artists that we're studying did. Now, our first week is going to start off with Grandma Moses. And so all of our artists we're going to be covering in this segment come from the modern period. And if you remember from our orchestra unit where we studied composers, those are the most recent artists um, throughout the 19th century um, into the 20th century. Now, our first one today is Grandma Moses. She was born... Let me show you this, in 1860, and then uh, she died in 1961. Here is a picture of her up in the corner, and there is a picture of her art. Now, why do they call her Grandma Moses? Great question. She wasn't uh, an artist until she was 80 years old. Now, she was so busy with her life um, working on the farm and taking care of the farm, she didn't have time to paint until she was in her 80s, and then she got to enjoy painting. And what we see in uh, most of her paintings are representations of what it looked like in real life. Like, she would draw a lot of, or paint a lot of things of people doing ordinary things, like working on the farm, showing villages. And the one we're going to be looking at Primarily today is this one. If you can see, she had lots of things going on there. She drew people going about their everyday lives, little scenes of towns. This one's in the snow in the winter. And here's one we can see that they made into a postage stamp. How cool is that? Now, Grandma Moses... Um, she was, did the type of art that we call folk art. And the reason we call it folk art is as um, she was growing up, she didn't have any formal training in how to paint or didn't go to art school, anything like that. She just paint, painted what she saw and was um, a folk artist, what they say, where they are making paintings of what they see. Now, for our six weeks, this is going to be our reference for um, for studying the artists. It has each of the artists that we're going to be covering in the six weeks, and it has some examples of art projects um, from those uh, each of those artists. Um, I'm going to be taking a few of them and doing a little bit different of projects in there. So if there's an artist that you really enjoy and want to do more, you can look in that book for other ideas of art projects that you can do for those artists. Now today we're going to be looking back at this, this one that um, Grandma Moses painted. She painted it in 194 or in November, uh, sorry, in 1943. And she, in November 2006, this became her highest selling work of art and it sold for $1.2 million. Wow. Well, what I want us to look at in this painting is how she really used perspective. Remember we talked about perspective when we did our drawing, our fine arts drawing projects? She used a lot of perspective. So back here in the distance, the things are little tiny. And then as they get closer here, like this house and the people, they're bigger, showing the perspective, seeing that those things are farther away and these things are closer up. She also said that she always started from the top to the bottom. Not, art, not all artists do it that way, but that's how she said she did it. She says, I paint starting at the top, from the top down, from the sky, then the mountains, then the hills, then the houses, then the cattle, and then the people. So we're going to start by starting up here at the top, and we're going to do a painting similar to this. Now I want to point out another option if you would prefer a little bit simpler of a project because there's lots of details in her work. You could also do something like this. I did this snowman here where it was uh, in the style of Grandma Moses in a similar sort of style where she's, you know, we're painting a snowy um, winter scene of a snowman. 
And so I painted the sky first, then I painted the snow down here, and then the snowman and the details on the snowman. So you're welcome to do that as an option too, if you would like a simpler option. Now, the option I'm going to be showing you today is a version of this painting. And so we're gonna start with our supplies. Now, we're gonna be using acrylic paint today because that's similar to the paint that um, what Grandma Moses used. If you have uh, any kind of paint there with you at home, if you're doing this project at home, temper paint works also. The only thing different is it's a little bit more watery so you don't get quite the bold um, colors and coverage that you do with acrylic paint. So acrylic paint is ideal, but if you have any kind of water soluble paint at home, that's fine too. And so I'm gonna be using a piece of cardstock to do the painting. I've got my acrylic paints here. I'll show you what my set looks like, but there's lots of different options out there for paints. I went ahead and got some of the paint on my palette. I've got blues, whites, and blacks. Those are the colors that we're gonna be using today. And then I've got my brushes. And so if you get some brushes, what we're gonna need is one that's a, maybe bigger and flatter, and then a, a smaller one for some smaller details as well. So we're gonna start at the top like Grandma Moses would. Get your brush out. I also have some water here and a paper towel so that when I need to change colors, I can. But to start off, I'm gonna start off with some whites for the sky and a little bit of the blue. And so I'm gonna get a little bit of water here because my white is a little dry and a little bit of the blue. And I'm gonna mix them together to make kind of a, a nice light blue that would be great for the sky almost white. Yeah, let me get that white kind of. There we go. And I, I like this color. You can do whatever you prefer. I might even get a little bit more white in there. The more white you have, the lighter it will be. So you really just need a tiny bit of blue um, to add to that white um, in order for it to be kind of a nice snowy sky like in our example. Let me get that out again. So see how it's really light blue, but you want it to be distinguished from the white snowy surface of the ground here. And then we're going to have some mountains there in between as well on a horizon line. All right, so I'm holding my paper horizontally for painting today. Remember we horizontal is this way, well, the long way where we remember that by the horizon line that where we see where the sky meets the land and that's how we remember the horizontal portrait is this way so if we do a portrait like when we do our picasso portraits coming up we'll hold the paper portrait way that's kind of maybe how like a portrait of a person you think their face would fit nicely this way and a horizontal is good for landscapes all right so let's get this guy going with our light light blue and we're going to go across the top painting the sky. And so you're going to want to cover that whole area there with your paint. Now, you since you have a nice white piece of paper, you could always just do it real um, lightly and like this and even have some of your paper showing if you want. And that's okay because we're going to go across and we're going to make our sky. After that, you're going to want some more of your blue and you might even mix in some a little bit of darker blue. So I've got some darker blues I'm going to be tapping into here with my white. Don't want them super, super dark. Remember in our example, they weren't really dark way in the background because when they're off in the distance, maybe there's a snowstorm back there, maybe it's foggy, but on a snowy day, sometimes you don't see things as clearly because there might be some weather going on like that. So I'm going to make my hills so you can kind of just make some mountains up and down. You can get more white to make a lighter mountain and more blue to make a darker mountain. And then there was one on the side here Let's see. that was really dark. And so we'll make a really dark one over to the side as well. This would be my dark one. I'm going to get a little bit of this turquoise blue in there and mix it in there. Yeah, I like that color a little bit better. 
All right. So this is how we make the mountains. And we're going to kind of want to get a horizon line going close to the top here because we want to have lots of room down here for our subject matter, which is going to be the people and the houses and things like that. So my horizon line is going to be up here to the top. It's above the midline because um, it's nice when you have a portrait, I mean, when you have doing a landscape like this to not have the midline right in the middle. You want to have it closer to the top. So let's make some hills like that real quick. Okay, after you have the hills in, we can paint some of the snow. Now, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause um, if you're at home. If you're in class, don't worry. You can do it quite quickly. Um, this is just practice, and then you can try it again at home if you want to spend more time on it. Now, for the bottom part, since I already have a white piece of paper, I'm not going to be painting all that snow because we're, we're going to want to make some details um, with the houses and the people and that sort of thing. And so I'm not going to be painting that white, otherwise I would have to wait for it to dry. If you're at home and you have extra time and you want to paint this solid white, you could. Um, but then just realize you're going to probably have to wait and come back to it the next day. So what I did is I'm going to just have get a little bit of white on my brush and just go across here. You can see I started here because my paper... Um, isn't white white it's just off white and so if I do this and I just brush a little bit of the white it just shows a little bit as if there's a white landscape there but for the most part it already looks like uh, white because that's the color of the paper all right and so the next step would be to be making some of the houses and the people and the different things that she has going on here so we're going to need a few more colors if we look at what um, Grandma Moses did, she painted some of them red, like the farmhouses or the barns. And there's one, a gray, a couple, several gray ones there, even a gray church there. So I'm going to get out a reddish brownish color and some light gray. Now, if you don't have the colors you want, remember you can always mix. Like if you have some black and white, but you don't have a gray, you can mix those on your palette. So I've got some black here and you just need a tiny, tiny bit if you're going to be mixing it and then get your white and then you can make a gray like that. You can even add a tiny bit of the blue to it to make it kind of a bluish gray. And I really like that for a house. So I'm going to use that color for a house. Now remember, you also don't need very much paint on your palette. You don't want to waste a lot. So See how I just have some small little bits of paint there? You don't need a lot for this, especially for the houses. So I'm going to start with the little ones in the background first. We're going to do, I've got a flat brush this time, which is nice, because I'm just going to do some rectangles. Now when they're back here in the background, you just, you can just do small ones, and then we'll add some more detail later. Now when we get to the foreground, that's the part that's even closer closer to us we're going to make a bigger sized house like this one it's going to be a bigger rectangle can get a little bit more paint on my brush now look do you notice i don't have a ton of paint on my brush because i don't want it to be globby i just want enough that's going to make the shapes that i need and just make a nice rectangle shape there and then, um, let's see, so I see here on hers, she's got a house there and then a church over here. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I've got my house, might make it even a little bit taller because it looks like hers was a two-story house. So that sounds kind of fun. Let's make a two-story house. And then I'm going to grab a little bit more paint on my brush and I'm going to put the church over here. So I'm going to make a rectangle and then on one part I'm going to make it go up because that's going to be like where the steeple of the church is going to be. All right. Now next I'm going to use some of the um, reddish brown color to make a few more little barns. So I'm just going to do like two or three. Let's see. Let me get a brush out for that. I'm going to also use a, another flat brush. So I've got another flat brush here. Just get a little bit of water on my brush just a little bit because you don't want to make this isn't watercolors and you don't want to make it too soppy wet 
So I'm going to make a couple. I think I'll make a, a one right here. Oops, this is kind of a scrappy brush. Here, that, and I might make another one. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint here just to make it flow a little bit nicer. But remember, don't make too much. Don't get too much water on there. There we go. Now that flows a little bit more nicely. And maybe I'll make another one Ooh, over here. That looks good. All right, you can choose where you want. You don't have to put it exactly in the same spot that I do or even where Grandma Moses did. We just want to kind of replicate it. So do you see these ones in the background I made smaller, then they're getting bigger, and then as we're closer to the foreground, they're even bigger. All right, next, while those are drying, because we don't have too much paint, so it shouldn't take very long for those to dry, but let's make some trees. And so I'm gonna take the same brush. Um, you could even use even a thicker brush, um, like this one. It's okay if it's not totally tight because there's the, <laughs> there's the camera. Um, we're gonna make some tree shapes. Now to do that, we're gonna use a little bit different of a style. We're gonna take some paint, dry paint, put it on your brush, and we're gonna be making some, here's my paper towel, making some shapes like this. We're gonna be dabbing it with not very much paint on it to make our tree shapes. So just get a little bit of paint on your brush, dab it on your paper towel, and I'm gonna start in the front because we want the bigger trees in the front and the smaller ones in the back. And the way we're gonna do this is kind of make that kind of shape for the trunk. And you can kind of go out to the side to make the branches. So there's one. And now I'm gonna make another one because there's lots of trees on here. But this is winter, so they don't have their leaves on them. They just have their branches. I'm gonna make a few more back here. Now I'm gonna get smaller as I go back. And back here, they're gonna be tiny. You can even use a smaller brush if you want to. I think I might. I'm gonna look for a smaller brush, maybe even one like this. Get some more paint. Okay, and I'm gonna do little trees back here. And they can go up and overlap your hills if your hills are dry enough. Now, I need a little bit more paint, so let me get some more paint. And I'm gonna keep going. And go ahead and make lots of trees. Just kinda, of, even just make the shape of the trees. It doesn't even have to be very exact because as you get further into the distance, they become a little bit more blurred together. All right, I'm gonna make some on this side and I'm gonna make some on this side. Once you have your trees finished, we're gonna add some detail to our houses. And so we're gonna wanna put some uh, windows and doors and roofs on them just so they can be a little bit identifiable as houses. And so I'm going to start with the church here so I can put a little bit of a cross here on the steeple that I made. And then churches tend to have sometimes they have long, longer windows and then maybe a door here right up front. So we don't need to be super detailed with this. We just want to give the idea that there are these different shapes. Now on this one, I'm going to make there be a roof and go across and down again. And on the building itself, I'm just gonna make some little square shapes that show maybe these are the upstairs windows here. Maybe there is a door here on the front with maybe two windows side by side. And a, well, let's put a big window here in the front. This is the front side and then back here, we'll do some windows here. So we just need to make kind of the idea that these are houses and barns but don't get caught up in the details just because like i said it's just to give you the impression that these things are here and with farther with away they go the less detail you get and so just so it looks like oh yeah i see a little house back there or i see a barn over here and these little marks that make the windows and doors 
show you those shapes there, those houses. And then you can start getting into some of the details here. And this is, again, where you can use some of your creativity of what, what do you envision in this scene? If, if this was a town that you were in and you were visiting or maybe you lived in and you were playing outside in the snow, what are some things that you would do? Well, I'm going to get a little bit of my dark blue here and I'm going to make little two little legs and almost like a stick figure with my paint and I'm going to imagine that this has a this maybe a little boy with a hat on him like a snow hat and so he he's like that and he's going to be playing in the snow out there and maybe he has a friend I'm going to get a now rinse my brush out that has a red dark brown coat over here and so I'm going to draw another little essentially stick figure because again it, it's not super detailed I'll show you her it just you can see I mean there are lots of detail but in um since they're so little you don't see like the faces you don't even see smiley faces you see the shapes of the body the details of what they might be doing you see them playing in the snow and doing different things like that so feel free to have fun with it of how you might be making here's my boy he's playing with this boy in the snow and you know what I'm gonna get a little bit of black and I think they have a dog playing with them too so let me make a little dog over here we'll make his pointy ears and his snout and little legs his body and the tail here see that you can see him playing in the snow too you could even make some snowballs maybe they're having a snowball fight have fun with it let's get some snowballs here in their hands and another one in this boy's hand here and then you can draw other things like this maybe there's horses in a sleigh ride or there's different activities going on maybe they're chopping wood for their fireplace have fun with it now another thing you can do is put some snowflakes in the sky because we've got all this snow here maybe it's snowing and so you can take some paint at the tip of your paintbrush and make some snowflakes falling. Now they won't show up very well where we've got a lot of the white, the light colors. You can also use the tip of the back of your brush to do this too. So I'm going to make some snow falling in my painting here because I'd like to imagine that it's snowing right now. Wouldn't that be fun? in the snow this is must be a place where they get lots of snow because it's very snowy so it's fun fun to think about that at this time of year all right and see now it's starting to snow so feel free to add the details that you want now in class you don't have a lot of time so go ahead and you also work on this at home after you get home and add more and more detail and enjoy your pictures and thinking about grandma moses We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.